Alrighty. I don't know what you people want to look at while I read this off. I'm just kind of scan it around and whatnot. I'm going to have to hold the phone like this. So I don't know how the video is going to look. Whatever. Alright. I've been working on this for some time. And it's about time that I start reading it. This is... After the target. Today I will be dis discussing the Elusive 6020. This is a document I made detailing and outlining this rod. Um... You don't find this rod anymore, but I'll get to that here shortly. This rod was designed to run primarily in the flat position on thick base metal. 6020 seems to have been phased out and dropped off the earth sometimes between 1995 and 2005. It seems much of its last mentions come from the 1995 era. The 6020 seemed to stay on the larger end of rod sizes. The 1995 edition of the Thomas J. Glover Pocket Edition has the E6020 under five different diameters from 3 sixteenths of an inch to 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. And at that time, listed as available from six different companies. As follows, Airco as the 6020, Air Products as the 6020, General Dynamics as the 620, McKay Company as the 6020, Murex Weld Products, as the Type D FHP, and Westinghouse as the D8620. In one forum discussion, a user was talking about uh, the mass of 6020 rods they used to use in the submerged arc welding. Uh, albeit, I do not know much more about it than that in a given area. Below is a list of the 1995 distributors of the 6020 from the Thomas J. Glover book and what became of them. Quote, Airco sold their welding equipment business to ESAB in the 1980s, retaining the very profitable industrial gas business. The Airco gas business was later purchased by the British Oxygen Company, and in 2006, that enterprise was purchased by the Lind AG, the German company that started Carl von Lind. McKay Company was bought by Hobart in 1993, providing Hobart with more hard-facing and stainless filler options. Murex was acquired by the BOC Group in 1967 in the UK. The rights of the Murex brand were sold to ESAB. Murex Limited was officially dissolved on the 11th of June, 2013. Business Dynamics is still operating at its own business, but no longer seems to uh, manufacture welding rods, much less the 6020. Air Products is its own company, and the bulk of its products are welding gases. They no longer produce arc welding rods. Westinghouse seems to have had a long flip-flop way of ownership over the past 20 years, and in 2018 became part of the Brookfield Business Partners or something. And by what I can see, they no longer have welding rods of any sort. In another weld discussion forum from 2005, a user was looking for the 6020 to weld a boiler. However, of all the people who discussed the topic in the forum, nobody was able to give a location to purchase any. It would seem that by this point, Lincoln's no longer producing them, and Airco had been sold. In mentioned 2005 form, a user gave a list of manufacturers who at the time had the E6020 as a product. Here's a list of those places, and what became of them as they are today. First one being Astrolite Alloys, which is still in business, but no longer carries the E6020. Second one is Champion International, of which it seems like it was a huge paper mill foundation, Founded in 1893 and sold out in 2013, it was demolished in 26, 2017. Third one is SADECV, a welding company that would appear to have a widespread range to some extent. It might possibly still have the 6020. However, I'm not 100% sure. The one rod product is labeled as Speed Arc HLE 620 E. Their locations range from what I saw from Scattered in South America, there's one about the center of the U.S. They're in a number of places, but I've never heard of them. Um, fourth one is Robinson Technical Products Corporation, which was completely dissolved as of the 20th of August, 2021. Fifth one is Thyssen Specialty Steels, otherwise known as Thyssen Krupp, and it seems it only produced mass quantities of steel for industries. I do not believe they carry welding rods anymore unless it is under Bowler Tyson, which might be one of its subsidiary branches. Sixth one is Washington Alloy, and while they 
have a very broad variety of electrodes they no longer have the E6020. Seventh one is Weldwell from New Zealand. This company still distributes uh, electrodes but no longer has the 6020. In the 1995 edition of AWS User's Guide to Filler Metals, the E6020 is described as E6020 classification. E6020 electrodes have a high iron oxide covering. They're characterized by a spray type arc, produce a smooth and flat or slightly concave weld face, and have easily removable slag. Low viscosity slag limits the use of E6020 electrodes to horizontal fillets and flat welding positions with arc penetration ranging from medium to deep depending on welding current. E6020 electrodes are best suited for a thicker base metal. More detailed rundown of the flux of the E6020 from an ESAB document is as follows. E6020 electrodes have a coating that consists mainly of iron oxide, manganese compounds, and silica. It has a spray type arc and produces a heavy slag that provides protection of the molten weld metal. The molten weld metal is very fluid, limiting the use to a flat or horizontal fillet welds. So it's probably a reddish brown colored rod, probably based on the flux composition. More stats on the ESAB document go on to say, classification E6020 weld metals are required to have more than 62,000 PSI. Tensile strength, 50,000 PSI. Yield strength, 22% elongation. And a 2-inch gauge, no charpy V-notch impact requirements and i just got a notification on youtube will be i'm thinking the 6020 was probably phased out in favor of 7024 which has similar flux characteristics and performance that and that most of its distributors either sold to another company or went out of business i've scoured the internet for months now looking for 6020 rods yet i've found none <clears throat> at least none that are conclusive i found many chinese and indian websites claiming to manufacture them and perhaps they actually do but Despite some of them giving accurate characteristics of the rod, the minimum order has ranged from 100,000 kilograms to 5 tons, and no clear picture to prove that's what they are. Only the same blurry photos of the same rods. Most of the sites use 6020 photoshopped on the box, or pictures of 6013s and 6011s. I sent an inquiry to a company in India out of curiosity, seeing as they showed their product um, to have been shown in 10-pound boxes. <clears throat> That being said, I have gotten contact with them and received a data sheet as well, which I will leave a link to in the description as well as their website. However, the shipping from India to where I live in the U.S. is cl clearly out of my price range, at $600 to $700. At the time of this, they had 10 boxes left in stock, and I hope to receive some pictures of the rods for reference, which I requested since I was unable to, obviously, purchase any. Um, I was told... Uh, by the manager of that company that the rods sell for uh one kilogram for five US dollars, which is approximately two point two pounds. Their description of the E6020 in a country where it was still used and produced, albeit a slow selling product as I was told, <clears throat> is as follows. Unitherm is an iron oxide type electrode for welding carbon steels. The welds are radiographic quality. Typical applications include locomotive fireboxes, rotary kilns, heavy structures, engine frames, bases, etc. Right now I'm looking at the data sheet and it has that uh, designation there. The codification is AWS SFA 5.1 E6020. IS, which I'm guessing is India standardification or whatever, I could be wrong, is 814EA4245X. Typical element, good grief, chemical composition of all weld metal, element carbon 0.07%, manganese 0.5%, uh, silicon 0.23%, sulfur 0.020%, phosphorus 0.020%. Typical mechanical properties of all weld metal. Now bear with me, I'm not familiar with these abbreviations of terms, which as it is, you may have to uh, look at the document yourself. UTS, MPA, in parentheses, 475, YS, MPA, 416, elongation, LD percent, 24, so I'm assuming it's 24% elongation for the rod. CVN impact strength at 0 degrees C joules, 50. Current and packing data, AC slash DC negative. <clears throat> Size millimeter. A 6.3 millimeter by 450 millimeter long rod. Current range 600. I mean 260 to 350. You get 
30 pieces per carton, 5 millimeter uh, diameter by 450 millimeter length, 190 to 260 current, 45 pieces per box. 4 millimeter by 450 millimeter rod, 150 to 210 current range, 70 pieces per box. 3.15 by 450 millimeter, 110, 150 amp range, 90 items per box, which is the one I was looking at, but obviously I'm unable to get that. And 2.5 by 350 millimeter, 70 to 100 amps, 125 rods per box. <clears throat> I do know of possible two possible sources for them, however. My dad's co-worker, co-worker's father-in-law has been a welder for many years and said he's heard of them. An online friend of mine who made back in 2017 on a dumb mobile game I no longer play is a mostly retired trucker in his 60s uh, who grew up welding and said he has a couple cans, one being unopened. So perhaps someday I can test them. Now you may be wondering, why all the fuss over an obsolete welding rod? Well, I first saw them in the aforementioned Thomas Glover reference book under the welding section. I was in welding class at the time and really only knew of 7018, 6010, 6013, and 6011. For some reason, I thought because a welding teacher had been doing welding for a while that he would have run like every rod ever. So I suppose that's what got me into it, and that's what fascinated me in it. That being 6020 was the first, how do I say, oddball out of the park rod that I saw. So, with all that being said, that pretty much summarizes what I could find of it. I have searched Google. I have found no actual pictures whatsoever of the E6020 rod in any of its designations. Um, let me see. Somewhere... Well, I wonder if I have that in my other uh, Samsung notes or something. I had one containing some of the other country references as to what they call it. Let me see. All notes. Hang on with me. Scrolling, scrolling. No, I don't. The Chinese designation for one of them was something like a J2, JD242 or something like that. But yeah, there's not much more to say about that. Um, you may wonder why, in general, I'm in interested in documenting and collecting obsolete old welding rods, of which I have an entire list of all, as many as I could possibly find of the, as I call them, E-series rods. <clears throat> Oof. With E being electro, that's an E7018, etc. Well, to me, the fact that you don't hear about them, you don't find them, you don't see them, makes you want to look at them, like, even more. Like, there's so little out there. Like, this is going to be the very, sir, very first video on the internet, especially YouTube, that I'm aware of, that outlines or even talks about 6020. And this is just the tip of the iceberg for some of these rods. Some of them, you can't even find anything about online. Like, it's a piece of history. It fascinates me. Just like, hey, somebody collects Star Wars figurines. Like, why do you do that? Well, because it's neat. It's like, it's some... Like, maybe they're a fan of that. But something about... This might sound a little overdramatic, but, like, the lost, the gone, obviously, the mysterious, if you can even use that word of the electrodes and rods that you don't see, use, hear about. Like, I kind of want to collect those, document them, and see them for myself. Because as time goes on, those rods will become more and more faded into uh, the past. That said, I have, obviously, a huge amount of them. Like, what in the world? Why are you doing that? Well, to a point, it's kind of hobby collecting, and using them, yes, too. And I have been saving money because I'm not always in the biggest financial shape of your home buying stuff. But yeah, you just don't find that stuff anymore. 
So that's what draws me to it. That's what fascinates me ever since I started stick welding. That's one of the reasons I kind of like stick welding more than MIG to a point because of the variation of it. But enough of that. I'll finish this up and get this out there. And perhaps you can know more about a rod that barely even exists on the face of the earth anymore. Have fun until next time. And how do I shut this off? One of these fancy camera app thingies. Uh, okay, I think I stopped. Click stop.